<laughs> Hello and welcome back to Nature Adventures with Rob and Andrea. <laughs> I'm Andrea Denham with the Upper Peninsula Land Conservancy. And I'm Rob Weiner. I'm with Michigan State University Extension. We are here at the Vilmette Peters Conservation Reserve, which is a gorgeous 123 acre preserve with about four miles, four and a half miles of trail, um, just right on the edge of Marquette and Nagani Townships. It's really easy to get to from Meyer. And today we are going to be talking about how to identify trees in the winter. That's right. We're here on a cold winter day. If you, if you folks got a chance to check out our video from the fall, we came up to this exact spot and we tried identifying trees with the leaves on. Um, today, it's going to be uh, quite a bit different because uh, we don't have those leaves to work with. So it's a little bit, uh, little bit more difficult process, but um, I'm ready for the challenge. Are you ready? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's give it a try. Learning to identify trees in the winter time is, is a very similar process to any other time of year. You're looking at individual features and characteristics on that tree that are unique from other trees. So in the summertime or in the fall, like Andrew and I came out here before, you, we used a tool called the dichotomous key and we looked at the leaves. That was a, a key thing that makes trees different. We don't have the leaves in the winter time, but we're still going to use that same tool, a dichotomous key. And we'll be looking at things like the bark, the buds, the branches, um, things that, are, that we can look at that make it unique when there's no leaves. So the thing that we start with is by looking at what's called the branching pattern. And there's only two choices. So the first option that you can have is something like this called an alternate branching pattern, where you can see that each branch is alternating on the main stem all the way up the tree. And you can look up close, the buds are going to be alternating. You could look at a, a huge giant tree and those big branches are also going to be alternating. Everything, if it's alternate, everything on that tree will be alternating. The only other choice you could have would be something called opposite. And you can see on this example that everything, instead of alternating, is directly opposite of each other on the branch. Again, the, the twigs, the big branches, the buds, it's all opposite of each other. So just being able to observe those differences will get you started to identifying this tree correctly. On this first tree we'll try to identify, we're going to start with our, our dichotomous key. And we'll start up at the very top steps where we're looking for, does this have alternating or, or opposite branching pattern? We can't really see the branches down low, but if we look up high, you can see that this has an alternating branching pattern. And that really helps because now we just narrowed out a lot of possible trees that it could be. So now we're really gonna be looking at the bark. And we have a choice here. Is the bark mostly smooth? And is it creamy, light gray, lighter colored? Or is it more scaly or papery or furrowed? And this one happens to be a word called furrowed, where there's lines and grooves in this bark that's what furrowed bark looks like. And that really helps. Now we have to, again, try to decide, does this tree, does it have more papery bark or is it not papery? And this is very obviously, this is very firm, dense bark. There's nothing papery at all about this. So we're, we're well on our way to identifying this tree just by looking at the, the color of the bark and describing what its texture is like. The very last step on our dichotomous key to help us identify this tree has to do with the terminal buds on the ends of the branches. Uh, as we talked about with this tree, the branches are, are pretty high up, so it's going to be a little bit hard to see the, the buds that are at the very, very ends of the branches. We're in luck today uh, because this particular type of tree often has younger trees growing around the base of older, matured trees. So right over here, we have the younger version of, of the exact same tree. So terminal buds are uh, the, the buds at the very, very end of the branches. So if we look at this tree, you can follow it up and you'll see that at the end of these branches are little clusters of brown pointed branches with firm gray bark surrounding it. 
So that actually brings us to our only option on our dichotomous key, which means that this is a red oak. This is the next tree we'll take a look at. And just like all the others, we're gonna start at the top of our dichotomous key and we have to decide, does, that, does this have an opposite or alternate branching pattern? Now there's no branches that I can see at my level, but if I look up way to the top of the tree, I can start to see some branches. And this is hard to tell because there's lots of other trees that are really close to it. But if I carefully make sure that I'm looking at branches coming from this tree, I can see that this has an opposite branching pattern. So once again, we are lucky enough to have a, a little young version of the same tree nearby. So we can take a really, really good look at our next step on our dichotomous key, which is of course the buds. So we're gonna take a look at this branch. I'll put it up against the snow so you can see it a little bit easier. And once again, we've got our nice uh, opposite branching pattern, very obvious right there. And then we're gonna ask ourselves, are the twigs at the ends of the branches slender or stout? It's a pretty simple metric there. You can actually um, use your finger or a, a pencil, but basically if the twigs at the end of the branches are pretty little, if they're thin, uh, we call that slender, but if they're bigger than about the size of a pencil, we would call that stout. So these are slender branches on an opposite branching pattern, and we're gonna take a good look at these buds here. And we can see that they are pointed, they're brown, and they are not in a cluster. Now that we've looked at the buds up close, we can take a look at the bark just to confirm that we're looking at the right tree. And this is another example of bark that is furrowed, or it has a bunch of lines. And the older this gets, the, the deeper these furrows are going to be. One thing that's mentioned in the, the dichotomous key is that a lot of these furrows, once they start getting these bigger plates, they're starting to curl, over, curl out away from the tree. And you can start seeing that in these areas already. So this just confirms to us once again that this is a sure tree. Next example we'll look at is this young tree right next to me. This one is uh, Warren Luck because we have branches that we can reach without having to look way up in the tree. And remember, just in our, just like with every other tree we've looked at, when you use a dichotomous key, you're always starting up at the top, and the first thing you're going to try to decide, does this have alternate or opposite branching pattern? And you can see that this definitely has an alternate branching pattern. Now we have to take a look at the bark. And if we look up close to this bark, we have to decide, does this have a smooth, lightish gray, creamy colored look, or does it have some textured? Is it papery or furrowed? And this one you can easily see has some texture. It's not smooth and, and creamy, light colored. So that tells us uh, where to go next. So our next question to figure out what this tree is has to do with the terminal buds again, just like we did with that red oak. We need to look at the buds at the very end of the branches. We're gonna, again, thankfully this one has a nice low branch, so we're gonna take a good look at these terminal buds here. Now, if you look at the end of these branches, you'll again see that lovely uh, alternating pattern, and you can see that these buds are not in a cluster. They are kind of a reddish brown color, and uh, they're pointed. We've looked at this tree so far and seen that it has an alternate branching pattern. It does not have terminal buds in clusters. It has pointed buds, reddish brown in color. The bark has some texture to it. And now the interesting thing about this particular tree is that if we 
there's one of the features that if you if you've gotten this far so far correctly on the on the key you might come to a part where it describes the bark as sloughing off and that's what this bark is doing if you rub your hand on it this is very dense hard firm bark but it really sloughs off as you rub it and that's the dead giveaway that makes this an ironwood tree <music> another tree uh, that we're going to work together through to identify. So again, we'll go to our dichotomous key. And the first question is, does this tree have opposite or alternate branching pattern? So take a look at the top of this tree. We'll take a look at these branches up there. That's an opposite branching pattern. So the next step of the dichotomous key talks about uh, the bark and the buds. So let's take a look at this bark right here. We can tell it's a pretty small tree, so it's probably younger. The bark is gray and smooth, and we can see there's starting to be just some little patterning happening on the bark here. On this example, we've gone through the bark, and we've, we've already determined that a young tree has smooth gray, grayish bark. We see that it has an opposite branching pattern, and we found a branch that has fallen off from this tree, so we can look at it up close. And you can easily see from this point that everything on this tree has follows that opposite branching pattern. Now just to confirm where we're at, so we've we've seen based on the features so far that this is looking like it's a red maple, but let's take a look at the buds up close to see if we can uh, further identify some of those, I, I, those unique characteristics. If we look up close, you can see that these buds are roundish, they have a, they have a reddish looking color, it's opposite, this is a, a sh all sure signs that make this a red maple. The next three we'll try to identify are, there's a whole bunch of them right behind me. These are all young, a young stand of these type of trees. But these have, again, straight at the top of our Dicamus key, have an alternate branching pattern. And all of them have a smooth, light gray bark. And that's going to be a key characteristic for us. So our next step is, of course, to look at the buds. So we'll take a look at the ends of these branches here. We'll take a good look at these buds. When we look at them, we can see that they are about a quarter of an inch long, that they are pointed, and that they are brown. All right, so we've got an alternate branching pattern. We've got smooth gray bark, and we're taking a look at the buds, and they are pointed, brown, and about a quarter of an inch long. Which brings us to the aspen family. So we know that this is either a stand of quaking aspen or big tooth aspen. Now in the winter, quaking aspen and big tooth aspen look really, really similar. But the way to really tell is by looking at, looking, taking a really close look at the buds here. So you can see when you take a quick or a close look at these buds that they're alternating along the twig and that the buds are laying flat along that twig as they're going up. They're not sticking out they're laying flat and sticking close to that uh, twig, which shows us on the dichotomous key that this is a stand of young quaking aspens. <laughs>
Asher had a really, really nice hike out here at the Vilmedi Peters Reserve Rock. Me too. Thanks for the adventure. Yeah, thank you. You know, it actually wasn't that much harder to identify trees in the winter as long as we work our way through that dichotomous key and use our observation skills. I, I agree. I think if we just, when you're, when you're going through the dichotomous key, just make sure you're looking carefully at what's the color of the bark, what's the texture like, and the same with the buds. What's the, what's the color? What's the shape? Are they opposite or alternate? And if we just look really carefully and read, read each of those sentences really carefully on the dichotomous key, we can work through it just like in the summertime. Absolutely. So we've actually gone ahead and linked a dichotomous key down in the in the notes below here. Um, and we would love it if you click on that link, download and print out uh, the dichotomous key and come out here to the Vilmedi Peters Reserve or out to your backyard or your own favorite nature preserve, whatever your favorite is, and try it out. Let us know how it goes. Take some pictures. Ask us any questions that you've got. Shoot us an email. Um, the Vilma de Peters, again, is really easy to get to. It's right on the edge of uh, Marquette and Nagani Township, just at the end of Brickyard Road, kind of by the Meyer gas station. Uh, and the directions for that are on our website as well. So once you get out here, take some pictures, go on the hike, go check out the waterfalls while you're here, and uh, let us know how it goes. Tag us on social media. We'd love to see it. Well, Rob, should we continue on our adventure? Let's continue. This All is right. a great experience. Cool. Oh, and don't forget to recreate responsibly while you're out on uh, UPLC preserves. Thanks. Take care.